Hello everyone, Courtney here from How to Loom Your Dragon. Welcome to part two of my designing tips and secrets on how I make my designs on the Rainbow Loom. You should have watched part one, okay? And you should have gotten your graph notebook. You should have graphed out symbols that we're gonna use when we eventually begin the graph. And you should have printed out a picture of the animal you want to design, okay? I, in the previous video, have printed out a picture of a poodle. But since I have already designed two poodles, I do not feel like doing a third. So that was just an example. I'm not going to be doing a poodle. So instead I printed out a picture of this adorable little blue dragon, which is a book I actually wrote <laughs> when I was younger. Okay, um, so this is Rodney, and I'm going to be designing Rodney as we go along in our videos. And based on the tips and techniques I give to you, you should be able to master techniques on how to build your own designs. Okay, so <clears throat> this video begins the mathematical portion of designing. Designing is very mathematical, okay? We want to make sure the head's not too big, we want to make sure the wings aren't too small, the tail's not too stumpy, etc, etc. Okay, so this portion of the video will kind of help us out with that. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is you actually want to take your loom, and you want to take any color band, and you want to set, you're going to double loop it, like this, and you want to double loop all the way down to the bottom, okay? You want to cap it off, you want to loop up, you want to take it off. So it's going to end up looking like this, okay? It's like just a strip of double looped bands, 12 double looped bands, okay? So I've made my strip. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure it, okay? And it is about one and three quarters inches. Okay, you should make yours too. Don't just write down what I write down. Make sure you actually have one, okay? Very important. Okay, so 12 double looped bands equals one and three quarter inch. Okay? Now you're gonna do the same thing, but with double bands. So instead of putting a double looped band on, you're gonna put two bands at a time, not double looped. Okay, that's double bands. So you're going to put them on two at a time all the way down to the bottom, cap it off, loop it up, take it off, and it's going to look like this, okay? This is a string of double bands. Where it, let's measure this now. This goes, this is about two and three quarters inches, okay? So let's write that down. Twelve double bands equal two and three quarters inches. We're going to do the same thing with triple bands, okay? So three bands at a time. Three bands at a time is the same length as double bands, but it's just thicker, okay? Which is good to remember because we'll be using this for certain body parts like the legs and stuff, okay? We want more sturdy sturdiness. So 12 triple bands equal two and three quarters inches, it's the same length. Okay, so this is gonna be very helpful in the future to remember this, okay? And you have your three samples as well that you will use, okay? So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your picture. Remember, you want a side view of the animal, okay? If you can get a front view too, you want that as well, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna measure him. So what we're gonna do, when we, when we um, design the animal, we're going to be starting with the extremities, like so, the wings, the tail, the head, and the legs, and the spikes. Um, and we want to do the torso last. So the torso, which is the main body part that everything's attached to, that's going to be um, designed last because everything has to be attached to the torso. Okay. All right. So if you only have a single loom, you don't want to print out a design that's too big. Okay. So this is going to be a single loom design, but it's not a huge, huge design, okay? Um, actually, no, I'm just kidding. Um, it doesn't matter what size you print it out because we can always adjust it mathematically. Haha. <laughs> so, okay, just print out a picture. It doesn't matter. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to measure the extremities. So, take your ruler. Let's measure his wings. So, his wings are from the base to the tip. They are about three and a half inches. So I'm gonna write his name so I know what I'm designing, Rodney. Okay, wings, 
three and a half inches. Okay, let's measure his head. His head is one and a quarter. One and a quarter inches. Okay, um, let's do his front legs. So you can kind of start at the bottom here not counting the feet, okay? So it goes up to here, so it's about one and three quarters, and then it bends this way, so it's about one and three, about three inches, okay? So legs, three inches. Okay, um, I'm gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna measure the back legs because chances are when I drew this, I didn't think about how much longer they are. You want the front legs and the back legs to be like the same length because otherwise when you stand the character up afterward, it's gonna, his butt's gonna be in the air <laughs> if you make the back legs too long, okay? So you just wanna keep the front and back legs the same length, okay? Unless it's specifically a character whose legs are supposed to be different sizes. Okay, we can measure his spikes too. Let's do that, let's measure his horn. His horn is about three quarters of an inch. Okay, horn, oops three quarters of an inch. Okay, um, let's measure his, his little tail, the little end of his tail. That's another thing we want to measure. It's about one and a quarter inch. So tail end. Okay, let's measure the tail itself. So I'm going to have to curl my ruler around because this tail is curved. So this is just an approximation, doesn't have to be exact. Three, four, it's about five and a half inches. So tail equals five and a half inches. Okay, um, let's measure his little feet, or his big feet actually, he's got big feet for a dragon. Um, his feet are about an inch. Feet equals one inch. Okay, if you have a frontal view of the animal, you want to measure the width, okay, of the head and the torso, or the chest, okay? Um, and let's measure his, his main body, so his abdomen. Okay, so that is about three and a half inches. Okay, so torso, three and a half inches. Okay, so let's say I measured all of his body parts, okay? So, this is good because the reason we did this, when we design him on the loom, we're gonna know, okay, so his wings are three and a half inches, his legs are three inches. So we know when we design him, we're gonna make his legs shorter than his wings, and we'll know by measuring how much shorter, okay? So if we end up making the legs, for example, um, and this is where we use this as a guide. If we make the legs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's say we make them six, six lengths long, okay? We'll write that here, six. So say we decide to do the legs six um, sets long. We're gonna know to do the wings seven sets long, right? Because mathematically, three over six equals three and a half over seven. It's like a proportion thing, okay? So it's it's very mathematical. Um, if you're if you don't know how to do proportions, you might get a little confused. But um, yeah. So that's why we did that, because we're going to be using that a lot when we design, right? So our proportions are going to be way on and not off because we measured things, okay? Um, so that's it for this video. So all you got to do is um, write this down, make your three sets so you have them off to the side. And then you are going to measure everything in your picture, okay? Great, and then in the next video we will actually begin the designing and I will explain, explain that as we go, okay? Alright everybody, have a good one. Hope this helped.